Ladies and gentlemen, today is January 26th, 2017, and this is the King Kale Show, episode 326, was that what that was? <laughs> 326, where we learn to be a better artist. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today we are going to be wrapping up, wrapping up the diva. This is where we left off last week, and this is part three of the series, so if you'd like to see how we got to this point, then just click up here, take you back a week, and you can see how we got to this point, but today we're going to be talking about overpainting. Overpainting, going from this to this and back and forth and all that stuff. I'll be teaching you guys about that, going through the finalization, how to finish up a piece, how to wrap it up, send it off to your employer, and they can be happy. And speaking of employer, I do have a bit of a confession to make. I know that this is coming out a day late, and it is because, yes, some things are going down, some new things are going down, and I can't conceal it any longer. So I will reveal it to you guys. I, in fact... Well, I mean, it's kind of a confession, kind of a, uh, an apology, because I know this is a day late, but uh, things have been getting a little bit crazy because I have joined forces with Wave Dash Games, and I am helping them to make a new platform fighter, in case you don't know what that is. It's like a Super Smash Brothers type game. And uh, yeah, we're creating a brand new game, and I'm working with some of the most amazing people in the industry. Some of you might know some of them. Uh, actually, Iron Stylus is part of the team, as well as Grumpy Monkey from Riot Games. And I am working with them to create illustrations and splash art for their characters. So that's why I've been a little bit busy as of late. But I hope that you guys, yeah, uh, hope you guys can understand that once you start a new job, things get a little crazy. Oh yeah, and go follow them. It's at, at we wave dash, and the website is wavedash.com. And you can check out the game. You can check out. Uh, you can see the news and all that stuff, and whatever else you do on Twitter. I, I barely use Twitter anymore, but you guys know how to do it. You guys are young. You guys know what you're doing with that stuff. So go do it. All right. Now, with all that out of the way, now that I've got my apology and explanation, my excuses are out of the way. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. Let's get into today's show, and that is overpainting. Okay, because I'm so happy with how this turned out, guys. I'm so happy. I mean, look at this. Look at this cute face. Look at this cute diva face. And I'm really, really proud of myself for pushing through. But unfortunately, things don't always turn out that way. There are dark times ahead. There are dark times when you go into the overpainting stage of your painting. And let's go ahead and get into the time lapse and I'll tell you guys a little story. I'll tell you guys a little bit about how I like to set this up. And then we're gonna go in there and we'll kind of dissect layer by layer uh, just to show you guys how I like to set up and avoid going crazy when I'm doing these types of paintings because as you can tell, there's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of small details. And unless you set this up properly, you are going to lose your mind. You are going to actually go crazy and you're actually gonna jump out the window uh, and fall. Well, I guess it's only, I mean, the fall from 10 feet wouldn't be enough to freaking end it all. But regardless, <laughs> Oh, this is so bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I promised myself I would do this in one take, so we're doing it in one take today because we don't have time. I have to finish this, and then I need to literally jump onto another project. It's, just, it's so crazy. Things are going crazy, okay? I'm seriously considering jumping out the window right now. I'm that embarrassed. I am literally that embarrassed. Okay, but regardless, what was I saying? Oh yeah, things need to be set up in a very organized fashion so you don't go crazy, okay? And then getting to overpainting is actually very easy. And don't worry, I know that this is a time lapse and it doesn't really explain anything, but I will show you real time how I go about doing this. So you at home, and, and specifically rules to keep in mind as you go into overpainting your piece, that will help you to not lose your mind, okay? So, But uh, I was really happy with this piece. We talked about a lot of the color theory that went into uh, how we were setting this up last week. And uh, just like the blue light from the TV coming from, you know, basically behind us, like it's coming from this direction, and that's lighting Diva's face, right? So that's kind of our main light source. But then you ha also have to keep in mind, oh, I imagine maybe she has like these lights on the ceiling that are lighting the top of her and kind of they're going to push her shadows a little bit more of a warm color. And it's gonna give us, uh, the reason why I did this specifically is because I wanted to introduce more warms into the piece because I wanted people to look at this piece and feel like not only that they were immersed, right? Like they were there with D.Va, 
right? But the fact is I wanted it to look, oh, and this is getting to the point where I was about to lose my mind. Okay, so let's pause this <laughs> because I was having such a hard time with her nose. Okay, and that's one of the things that can go wrong with overpainting. But anyway, uh, I wanted to add more warms into the piece. Actually, I guess I can just keep playing it. I wanted to add more warms into the piece, that way it felt more cozy. It felt less like depressing and like dark and gloomy and you know, a lot of things that blue represent, right? A lot of like strange feelings can be associated with blue. So they say, researchers are still out on it, but they, uh, they have concluded that blue is the closest thing to depression. Okay, so too much blue makes you not feel good, right? We like warm colors, we like natural colors. Uh, like a little bit of green in there. Green is a very natural color. And you might notice that, hey, there's no green. This is the only green that's in the entire piece. And that will help to pull our attention, pull our attention to the focal point, which is Diva's cute face. Well, hopefully you think it's cute. Uh, is this, did I just play this one? I did. Man, I suck. Okay, there we go. Okay, continuing. <laughs> continuing from where we left off. Okay, more and more overpainting. Okay, so my basic idea with overpainting, and this is the latest thing that I've been getting into, is um, prior to this, when I rendered things, I always tried to make sure that my values were set up in a way so that way you didn't need like this type of thing. See how the edge of this headphone right here has this black line to help like show that that's the edge? Um, before, I would always try to blend the lines or kind of like diminish them to the point where they weren't there anymore. And lately I've been saying, you know what, why, why have I always been doing that? Why do I always take away the lines? Is it because I want it to look more realistic? And it's like, well, maybe that's the case. Is it leftover things from doing lots of splashes? Yes, probably, because in the splashes at Riot, like we don't like lines, but you know what? I do like lines and I do like comics and comics have dark black lines around the characters. So I said, you know what, screw it. This is my character or well, this is Blizzard's character, but this is my rendition of the character. This is my style, so I'm gonna do it the way that I want, okay? And that should be empowering to all you guys out there that feel like you need to conform to something, right? Obviously, if you're working for the company, then yes, you need to, you know, make sure that style works well for them. But if you're doing your own stuff, no, you gotta, you gotta embrace. You gotta embrace what you love. You gotta do it the way that you like it. And uh, yeah, don't be ashamed of that. Okay, so that's my philosophical and motivational thing for the day. Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of this. Um, yeah, so I was really happy with how this is turning out. Lately, I've been enjoying, speaking of stylistic cues, uh, one thing that I've been really digging is sort of like doing this, this thing with my shadows. So I always, when possible, like to add a tiny bit of like cell shading to it or a cell shading technique. And that can be seen like, see right here, this shadow, see how this creates like a shape? and it's like got a really hard defining line. Same thing here, right? See how these shapes, I mean, these are cast shadows. This is a little bit soft here. But for the most part, there's areas where we're mixing like hard edges and soft shadows. See here, um, I really try to stay away from doing uh, hard shadows on the face, right? See how these are very, very smooth. There's a little bit of a hard shadow right there. But for the most part, oh yeah, and these cast shadows are hard. But for the most part, when I'm doing the face, I really like to make sure that there's a lot of soft transitions, right? Because we want it to look very like cute and um, and soft and <laughs> another word, right? Something amicable. <laughs> okay, so, and that helps a lot. That helps a lot to do like soft things. I could have made maybe like this, I could have taken this shine and maybe like made it more like graphic, like done it like this, or it looks like that, but I don't know. I don't know. I guess I was just kind of winging it the way that I liked it. Uh, but you can see on the hair, I, it is much more graphic. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, inconsistent styles. You, are you okay with that, Kanan? Yes, I am, because it's my freaking drawing and I do it the way that I want. Yeah, but see how these things, like these shines, are much more graphic. They have harder edges. So keep that in mind as you're going through your pieces. Sometimes uh, you might like to do something like this. Sometimes you might like to incorporate a little bit more cell shading uh, along with softer shadows, okay? So let's go ahead and just go back to this. Did I make a new layer? Is that a new layer? Ah, it is. Okay, cool. So I can draw whatever I want on that. All right, perfect. Back to the time lapse. And then we're going to do a little bit of live tutorial. We're going to do some dissection. And then we're going to finish this thing, answer some questions, send you guys off. And then I got to get back to work. Like, like really, really bad. I got to get back to work. <laughs> In fact, uh, if my employers are watching this, uh, I swear I'm not doing this on company time. I did not take 20 minutes. I did not take a 30 minute break. 
<laughs> to do this show in the middle of the day? <laughs> Actually, yes, I did. And if you want to fire me, that's totally fine. Totally understand. But this is important. I need to get my show out, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Ah, oh, man. Okay, anyway. So this thing is finishing up here. Dude, I, I have to say that I really enjoyed this piece. I really, truly enjoyed this piece. Um, but I do want to talk to you guys about a little bit of the journey, right? There's a journey that happens whenever you're painting pieces. A journey that happens um, whenever you set out to do a big endeavor, right? A, a big adventure and a brand new piece. Trying out things that you've never done before, perhaps, like blue lighting or, you know, like drawing a city in the background and having like a reflection in the window. You're doing a bunch of stuff that you have never done before and that can be very daunting. But because you're going a little crazy and because you're very courageous, you decide to accept the challenge and you go for it, okay? And that's, the, that's step one of the journey and you're fired up, right? You're excited, you're excited. But then as you go, okay, we're gonna go ahead and launch into, let's do a little bit of dissection on this, okay? And as I dissect, uh, I will continue the story. Okay, but as you go about your journey, right, you start to realize a few things. You, you get to the point where you're doing the line art, you gotta clean up the line art, you're like, okay, this is feeling good. You're about like maybe five, six hours into it. And uh, then you start laying out the masks, right? And then you get to this point and it's like, oh, okay, well, the colors are coming in together. Uh, they're looking good. Uh, maybe the background isn't in yet, so we don't see any of that. We don't see any of this stuff. Uh, or it's just like an early stage. It probably looks something more like this. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it looks something more like this. And you're like, okay, everything is set up properly. I've got all my masks all labeled and separated properly so I don't lose my mind. See like skin, light, logos, all these things are on their own layers so I can focus on them one at a time, okay? And you're feeling good, you're feeling good. And then you start going into, as I said here, uh, you start laying in your colors and you start to get a color palette and you start to get a feeling, a mood. And you're like, yes, I can feel this coming together. Okay, but now there's a point where and specifically, I really believe it, it happens during the overpainting stage. When you're on the home stretch, you're on the home stretch and things are gonna start to get a little scary, okay? You're gonna start to doubt yourself. You're gonna start to feel like crap. You're gonna start to, you want it to be done so bad that you might start taking shortcuts and you might start, and you've been looking at something for so long, in particular the face. Remember when I was talking about the time lapse? I kept trying to draw the nose over and over again. See, like, so take a look at this. I'm actually gonna pull the overpaints off of this and you can see what they actually look like. See, so all of this, all of this is actually what lays on top of the face. This is this is Diva's makeup, right? <laughs> this is Diva's makeup that we put on top of the face. But see how it's like transparent? You can look right through it. But uh, all of that work, when laid on top, it allows it to sharpen the image and, and, and it just looks a lot better. But here's the challenge. Here's the challenge, is that you look at that face and you say, I like the expression of that face. I like the way the face makes me feel, right? <laughs> or maybe you're saying that. And then when you go to render it, sometimes it doesn't look exactly the same. And then you're flipping back and forth and back and forth over and over again. Luckily, this one finally worked, but there was a bunch of faces. There was particularly a bunch of noses and, and mouths that I did that were changing the expression ever so slightly to the point where I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I felt like it was diverging from the original, uh, the original feeling that I had. And this is the true challenge that comes from overpainting. And that is, uh, trying to capture the same feeling while making it more clean, okay? While making it more clean, okay? So, and you can see the same thing happen with, oh, you can see the same thing down here with the clothes, see? So this is before. I will say that a part of my new style is I do like to thin the lines. You can see here that the lines are thinning, but I don't completely omit them. I really like to have that dark edge on, especially on the silhouette. On the insides, you can see like, for instance, this line on the inside of the shirt. Let's take a look at what color that is. See, it's actually like this dark blue. So it's much less uh, contrast. There's much less contrast there. Whereas on the outside, well, and this is like in a shadowed area, it's much darker. But in general, I really like to have darker outlines on the edges of my character, okay? And you can see like little things like this. I literally just changed the cast shadow on her forehead there. And the reason why I did this was because I said, okay, well, if the TV is, this would make sense if the TV was like more on like an upper angle, like it was up on the wall and it was shining down. It was shining on down on her forehead. 
but it's not. It's directly in front of us. So rather, the cast shadow is going to be more straight on. It's going to be projecting the shadow of the hair straight back rather than downwards. Okay, so tiny things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the background. Let's move on to the background. Let's go ahead and get rid of Diva. Let's talk about the background. Okay, so back here, you can see, wow, can you, you don't paint the entire background behind the character where no one will be able to see it? Of course not, no, that's, <laughs> that's rule number one. You don't need to paint an entire background. Only paint what is seen, only paint the illusion. You are a master magician and you only need to paint what is going to be seen, right? It's your little sleight of hand. Only paint what is gonna be seen by the audience. But let's go ahead and move into the background, okay? So the background has a couple things. And uh, these will actually, I'll probably go in and clean these up really quick. I'll demonstrate my overpainting technique right there. But see, we have our lanterns and see they're on their own mask. And then we have a screen, screen. Oh, that's the computer screen. And that's set to hard light. That's just like a hard light layer that is like a glow, right? I just stuck that right on there. And then it just, just makes the computer screen, gives it that nice aura. So if you guys are wanting to do glow effects, then uh, consider doing something like this. Let me show you what color I use. Let's go ahead and set it to normal. Look at that, it's like this light blue. It's light blue. But as soon as you set the layer style, right? You set your layer style by clicking, clicking here, clicking here, and then select hard light. And then you move that right onto your screen. I found that this works so good for, for doing glowy surfaces. It's very, very easy. Or you could just paint it by hand and, you know, if you can do that, I, then super props to you. But uh, I like to use the computer to my advantage and hard light works dang good. So use it, use it people. Okay, we have the computer lines. Uh, I did wanna do a little bit of work on the computer. In fact, I can show you uh, a couple quick little things for lighting on that. Uh, but we'll do that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and go back. So you can see here's the computer mask. This is what we would drop our lights on. You can see that I put this light right here. Layer 57 is just the light for that computer tower there. Uh, let's take a look at the reflection. We went into it a little bit last week, but let's talk about how we actually pulled it off. Okay, and the answer. The answer resides in uh, right here, okay? And again, it's a layer style, guys, layer style. So this is our reflection. Let's see what it looks like when we set it to normal. Okay, cool. Well, look at that. There's a lot of dark colors. It's, it's the silhouette of Diva, and we can see a little bit of the lighting on the wall, right? But most importantly, we can also see the lights from the ceiling, which helps to translate, or rather explains why there is this lighter color. Do you see how there's that very, very subtle, warm color coming in from the top of our character? See, lighting the skin there, lighting the top of the leggings there. And uh, again, this was to cozy up the piece, make it feel more warm and nice. Um, but we need to make sure that we are explaining why that is happening. The lanterns, maybe that could work, but they're more so behind Diva. Those are behind us. So it might get a little bit of like rim light if I wanted to get in there and do something like this. I don't know, maybe maybe I might go in there and do like a little bit of rim light. Uh, let me grab a brush here. Like you could do something like this if you wanted to. But, I mean, well actually that doesn't look too bad. Maybe we'll do something like that. Maybe, maybe we will save something like that for the final. I don't know, I don't wanna to get too much into that just yet because there are things that I know are higher priority that I wanna get done, so we'll focus on those. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the reflection. Okay, so the way that reflections work is, and this was talked about in the previous episodes, more in depth, but in general, the way that you wanna set up your reflection is you create a, a picture like this, you create a, uh, rather, a, an image like this, and then when you set it to lighten, all of the dark parts, all of the darkest parts of the picture, you'll be able to see through, they become transparent. Yet the lighter parts stay. And that is because, right, there's not enough, there's more light being reflected to our eyes from the window than what is outside. But as soon as there's less light, then the light from the background shines through and we're able to see it. Wow, I, I can't believe I actually explained it really well. I totally explained it like perfectly. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. The light that's being reflected from the window is stronger than what is behind it. Therefore, we see it, okay? But anything that is darker than what is behind it, we will see that, okay? That's why you can see the city back there. And hey, speaking of the city, let's talk about the city. Let's go ahead and get rid of the reflection. Let's talk about how we actually set this up. Oh, 
Uh, it's not actually on this PSD. Let me go ahead and pull up an older one where it's actually, because eventually I flatten things down. I, I will flatten things down, specifically big things uh, that require a lot of layers, such as the background. So let's talk about the city. Is this it? Aha! Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So the city comprises of a bunch of different layers, okay? So uh, this one I actually sized down the tower because I didn't like, like these, these buildings were supposed to be super small, right? These buildings right back here in this city were supposed to be very, very small. And this tower is supposed to be behind those. The tower is even further away. So by comparison, this tower looked mega huge. And I know the, the sole tower is big, but it's not that big, right? So we needed to size that down a little bit. Uh, right here, we have a little bit of glow. Now this is something that's very important that a lot of people overlook. And that is that there is glow that comes from the bottom of the, the city, right? The street lights and all the stuff down here and, and like the buildings and neon signs coming from below the skyscrapers, it has a bunch of light that gets reflected up or that is just like emanating. It's like an ambient light that kind of goes up the skyscrapers. And when you add this subtle thing, see, look, just the jump from this to this, that subtle light treatment really helps to push the realism or, I mean, this is still like very cartoony, but it pushes the realistic feeling of a city. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, here we go. Here's a perfect example of our city and the overpaints. See how I just put all the lights on one layer? You can go ahead and grab them and you can just move them around. Oh, whoops. You can grab these lights. Wait, where are they? The light. There we go. So you can grab these lights and you just move them around wherever you want. But uh, I did them on their own layer, so that way I could more easily mess with that. Okay, and I totally just f this entire thing up. Totally just f this up. Okay, there we go. Okay, continuing. Continuing. So there were those lights there. Uh, oh, also some other little tiny lights there for the reflected light. Here's the lines for the background. And then as we get further back... Yep, there's our buildings, there's that. And uh, okay, okay, so here's another really important thing that might, you might not notice at first, but this is a really good way to capture depth in your pieces, guys. So take a look here. So in general, what you wanna think about is that the things that are closest to you are going to have the darkest values. So let's take a look at the shadows in say like this, uh, say like the sheets, right? Or on D.Va. See how they're very, very dark? But then as soon as we go back to the buildings, see already, I mean, we're moving up just a tad bit. We move from here to here, right? We're moving up a little bit. And then as you go back further, see we're moving up just a tad bit more. And this is because of atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. As you move to the background, there's more air in your way. There's more air that's picking up particles of light and like reflecting it all around the place. And so that way, the darkest parts of your picture, AKA the shadows, are going to become lighter as you go into the background. So you get this layering effect of like darker values in the front and then lighter values as you go back, see? So this is the very, very background, but see how we're still very, very dark? We're almost at this mid-tone, but there's this very clear, there's this very clear um, pattern, very clear pattern as we get closer to the viewer, our shadows become darker and darker, okay? Now, I confuse this. Okay, now I need to explain this because I got this confused when I first learned about it. And that is that I thought, okay, the closer that things are to me, I should just make all the values dark. I should just make all the values dark. So I made the mistake of thinking that we needed to do something like this, right? So it's like, okay, well, this character is closest to me. So therefore, it should have the darkest values, okay? It's got the darkest shadows already, but it needs to have darkest everything, okay? So let's go ahead and darken everything. Okay, so my pictures would end up looking like this. I don't know why your head didn't get darkened. Okay, so it'd be like that, right? And it's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense, but you also need to keep in mind that, you know, there can be light sources as well in the foreground that uh, are going to be very clear. They're gonna be very clear because light also gets distorted by atmosphere. So basically you wanna think of it both ways. The closest things get the darkest shadows, as well as the lightest lights, or the most, most intense lights and the most vibrant colors. Uh, and that's the best way that I can 
teach it to you guys, okay? So that's for you guys that want to create more depth in your pieces. Remember, just lighten things up or rather just put more atmosphere, more atmosphere, whatever. And the atmosphere is whatever color the sky is, okay? Whatever color the sky is or whatever color is interacting with the air. Most of the time it's the sky, but there can be like spotlights and, and, and lights from like the city and all that stuff. But uh, in general, that's a good way to remember it. The color of the background, the color of the sky is your atmosphere. And that's what's going to mingle and mix with all of your shadows. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So now that I flat my gums properly, let's talk about overpainting. And then we're gonna move on to some questions. And then we're gonna end, okay? So overpainting, what is it? What is it? And what are things that you wanna keep in mind as you do it? Well, let's, let's get started with that. Okay, so for a proper overpainting, what you wanna make sure that you have is you have your lines set up and you have your uh, mask set up. So here's your lanterns. So a really fun way that you can get your lines ready and your piece ready in general for overpainting is by coloring your lines. And you color your lines by doing this. You're going to select a soft brush, right? Soft brush, uh, both for your brush and eraser. And then I want you guys to go to your line layer and I want you to hit this magical button right here that looks like a checkerboard, okay? What that's gonna do is gonna put a little lock right there. It's gonna lock that layer down. And then what you're able to do is you're able to go in there and you can actually paint your lines. You can paint just the lines. Isn't that awesome? Wow, look at that. And you can make these things like super bright or something in between. You can find something that you like. Find something that you like, okay? Now. Uh, these look actually okay, but I don't want it to be super saturated. So we're going to desaturate just a tad bit. Maybe something more like, uh, I don't want them to be super bright either. So let's see, maybe that is good. Maybe something along those lines. There you go. I'm just eye dropping, just eye dropping and kind of dropping those things in. See what we like. I think that looks really nice. Nice. Okay, so that's step one. You wanna color your lines to get them ready for overpainting. Step two, make a layer, and this is critical, you must name it OP, okay? You must name it OP for overpainting. Otherwise, this technique doesn't work at all, okay? So you wanna make sure that you select chalk brush or your brush of choice. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to begin blending. Blending and cleaning, blending and cleaning. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get rid, we wanna get rid of this stuff, right? See this crap in here, this, this artifact stuff? I'm gonna get rid of that, okay? And see how I'm painting? I'm, I'm literally eye dropping this red and I'm painting it back here. Now you gotta be careful because you'll paint into your lights as well. But think of it as um, one, I mean you could technically go in there and like erase your lines too. So I mean, do what works for you. It works for you. See how I can go in there and kind of erase and clean up these lines. That works okay too. But uh, once I'm into the overpainting stage, I really like to just kind of roll with it. I really like to roll with it. Okay. So let's continue with that. And yes, this is looking great. So see, it's actually very, very simple. But your goal here is to just get a nice clean shape a nice clean shape and a good read. A good read for your viewers. So you don't, as not to confuse anyone. You don't want to confuse your viewer. You must keep their minds in mind. Okay, so there we go. That's how I would overpaint those lanterns. But I have a feeling you guys didn't show up to watch me paint these lanterns for a freaking half an hour. You could even go in there and do like these little things. You could add in those little details, like the little, whatever, the little structure things that go through them, kind of hold them together. Little details, you like that? Easy, easy. And you can go ahead and do that for all your lanterns. You can have a good time, okay? But let's talk about, um, let's talk about something that I'm sure you guys are more interested in. And that is overpainting the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take off the overpainting of this. And I'm gonna show you guys how I would actually do this in real time, okay? So we're starting here and 
you guys might say, okay, well, it looks like you've already done the line coloring because things are softened at certain points. See, look, like where these the pink triangles are, look at what color the lines are. They're like this purple, they're not black, right? You don't wanna have black lines on your face, okay? Really stay away from that. Uh, you wanna have reds. Reds in the face look very nice. Uh, even dark, dark reds, but try to stay away from going all the way, like super desaturated black, like basically all the way down to the left, right? You don't wanna have your lines going there. Otherwise it's gonna look muddy, it's gonna look gross, okay? <laughs> so anyway, and speaking of muddy, so here's a perfect example of where I was running into this. I'm gonna paint this nose for you guys. I'm gonna paint this nose. Okay, so watch how I go about doing this. So I like the values that are in here. I like the values that are here. So I'm going to alt click that to grab that color and I'm going to begin softening, right? I'm gonna begin kind of rendering this out. Okay, and I'm asking myself, okay, there's a darker value here, but why do I like it there? Well, maybe it represents like the cast shadow of the nose, you know, but we don't wanna to go too crazy with it. We don't wanna to go too crazy. Now, another thing that I ended up doing was, oh, hey, I really like like this, this relationship that's happening up here, like with this sort of like reddish that's kind of showing off the subsurface and like the kind of um, the blood vessels in the cheeks. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of that to the nose as well. I really want a little bit of that in the nose as well. And see how that livens things up, makes it look really nice. Cool, cool. See, isn't that easy? But you're trying to get rid of these things. You're trying to get rid of these artifacts. You want to think of it as more of a design. You want to think about your drawings as more of a design. So see how this is like one shape? It's like, it's, it's very deliberate. It's very deliberate. Okay, you wanna stay away from this stuff where it's like kind of like, eh, kind of like loosey goosey and you have like little things out here and then you kind of erase it a little bit, but not all the way and it's just kind of nasty. You wanna get rid of that stuff, okay? No loosey goosey. No loosey goosey. All right. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first, folks, okay? So there you go. So that's an example of how I would paint the nose. Let's go ahead and move on to the lips as well because this is a really good example right here. Okay, so see how I'm gonna take this shape and I'm gonna really define the edge of it. Define the edge. I'm alt clicking. Okay, my thumb is always on the alt button as I'm blending and kind of getting this style figured out or getting my, my overpainting down. Okay, so I'm alt clicking there, adding a little bit of that. Alt clicking there, clean up that shape a little bit. Alt click there, clean this shape up a little bit. You know, let's see right before your very eyes. Right before your very eyes, your piece is coming together. All right, have a little shine there, a little shine on. And look at that, guys. Look at that. You're master over painters. Soften that right there. Put in a little bit of that dimple. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. See? Now you can click it on and off. See what that's doing? That is overpainting in a nutshell. And you guys should all be doing it this way. Well, I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to draw like this, you should be doing it this way. But <laughs> yeah, so slowly over time, I literally painted that nose hundreds of times, but I eventually got one that I liked. Uh, but you can see how that principle is put into play here. And that's how we do overpainting, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do it. Alrighty, now that I have properly instructed you how to do that, let's go ahead and cast some question catapults. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going with quality and quantity today because we got a lot of really good questions coming in from the MZ. And if you'd like to submit your own questions for review, just submit them down there, mz.com slash kankale. Join the community, post your art, post these awesome questions like this. And let's get started. So the first one is coming in from Srailika, Krailika, Krailisha. And they are asking, is listening to music or audiobook podcasting distracting while you're working? Um, and my answer is absolutely not. I really like to listen to music, especially when I'm in the zone. Um, uh, but you want to be careful about kind of like going in the zone for too long because sometimes you might end up spending a lot of time working on something that, uh, you might spend hours working on something and then you take a little break, come back and you're like, oh wait, I actually didn't even spend all that time at all. I spent all this time rendering this background that's behind my character that's no, that no one is going to see. 
right? So in that case, that is not a good time to kind of uh, allow the music to take you to that place where you'll spend too much time working on something that's not gonna be useful, okay? So yes, listen to stuff, but make sure you're also taking breaks, very important. Next question, drop out of art school, coming from Escabriles, and they are asking, I've talked about whether or not to go to art school. You guys ask this question so, so much. And while I can't, like, I feel bad giving like a definitive answer, like, yes, you should drop out of art school. No, you should go over here, you know, but uh, best thing I can do is give my own experience. And that is, I did attend college for a semester. I learned 3D animation, a little bit of that stuff. Uh, but really nothing can replace, nothing is going to take the place of the 20 plus years that I spent learning on my own, right? Studying on my own, studying other artists, copying other artists, taking their stuff and meshing it together until it became something that I call, hey, look, it's my style. I'm completely original and unique, and unique, right? <laughs> Nobody else is like me. And I definitely came up with this all on my own. It didn't copy anybody, right? But let me read the rest of this question. Um, currently freshman year, and it's been an awful experience from the friends that, oh, oh, apart from the friends you made. Yes, and that is the best thing about school, is that you'll meet other artists, you'll meet kindred spirits, and that's a great place to network and make, uh, make friends. So I love that, and that's personally one thing that I do miss, I do miss about uh, going to college. Um, so let's see, school seems to hate digital art. Overall, I feel like I'm not getting my money's worth and practice on my own, so it's stupid projects, I would get much, I would get better much faster. Yeah, there is a th there is a weird tendency for schools. They really value value traditional art, uh, and that's like traditional media and physical media. And I do understand why they want to push this so hard because, uh, to be honest, uh, it's so much harder. Traditional physical media art is so much harder than digital painting. Uh, like I have a huge respect for people that can do that stuff. So it makes sense that they'd want to teach you the hard way first, teach you about color theory, teach you about like mixing paint, neutralizing and all this stuff and color wheel and color theory and all that stuff. But in actuality, you can kind of, it's kind of like playing a video game where there's the tutorial, but you kind of like figure out, like halfway through, through the tutorial, you realize that you're learning at a quicker rate and you kind of want to just skip it, right? And that's kind of what I feel like digital art allows you to do. It's kind of a, a quick way for you to just do experimentation and just, like I just want to illustrate comic books or I want to draw cool uh, heroes or I want to draw sexy ladies, right? That was my reason. So I just jumped into that and that was my reason. So um, yeah, I totally understand how you're feeling, Escavriles. And I think that, um, yeah, I think you should write it out, at least finish the semester and then figure out if you want to continue. But uh, me personally, I was there for just two semesters and then I decided I was done. So uh, yeah, it's up to you. Next question coming in from Hair Rave. Hair Rave. <laughs> and they are asking about best piece of port for a portfolio. Sending it off to Riot Games. Hey, awesome. Very cool. Uh, looking for a summer internship. Cool. Last, uh, it's coming. Uh, companies look at the art portfolio first. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been freaking out ever since I mentioned it. Is that seriously news? Like, no, you think we open up the thing to that? Mm. Oh, here's what the artist looks like. Oh, here's this cover letter explaining their entire life story. It's, it's, it's 10 pages long. Let's read this before we actually look at what they can do. No, of course we're looking at your portfolio first. So yes, you should be a little freaked out, but also not, not really. It's not that big of a deal. But I will say that plan on the best pieces for your portfolio is put your best thing first. Put your absolute best thing first, right smack dab. As soon as they open that thing, you want them to be like, whoa, like awesome. But here's the really important follow-up that a lot of people miss. As soon as they turn that page, right? As soon as they turn that page from that first thing, I want you to show them your thumbnails. I want you to show them the 20 other compositions that you never used, that you just threw away. And then I want you to show them how you refine that sketch. I want you to show them the color comps. I want you to show them the process. I want you to show these people what your process is gonna look like after they hire you, okay? And don't feel bad if they don't choose you because there's thousands of people applying and people get so, they feel so bad and rejected when they don't get chosen out of a thousand other people that are submitting for that same job. And imagine this. I really want you to imagine this. You're the guy, okay? You're the guy at Riot. There is no guy at Riot, by the way. It's just like people like draw a straw and then whoever picks the shortest one has to answer emails that day. But that person, right, the draw the, <laughs> took the shortest straw, sits down, and they're like, okay, 
I gotta find a new artist for the team. I gotta find new promising artists for the summer internship. And then they open up this thing, thousands of emails. Okay, what are they gonna do? They're gonna click one email and they're gonna be like, okay, uh, okay, skip the cover letter. Let's look at the portfolio, right? First thing, no, that guy sucks. Second person, no, that guy sucks. And then after about maybe 20 max, they're gonna get burnt out. They're gonna get really bored and they're probably gonna wanna go to lunch or something, right? And so what I'm saying is don't feel bad because it takes time. It takes time for them to notice you. Sometimes you might just get buried. Sometimes you might just get buried, which is why I say to get yourself out there to get yourself, give yourself an advantage, you wanna be attending conventions. You wanna be attending things and networking with people that actually work there, okay? That way when you meet them face to face, you can be like, hello, my name is Harave, and oh, hey, remember I met with you last time at this convention, I showed you this portfolio. Thank you for taking your time to give me your input and feedback on that. They'll be like, oh yeah, Harave, I totally remember you. And then at that point, you can ask them, hey, how are things going with the summer internship thing? Or are there any openings for this and that? And they'll be like, yeah, actually, there is an opening coming up. And, and we've been looking for somebody. And you've been really improving. We could definitely give you a shot. And then you want to ask for their email. Ask for the, e not necessarily their personal email. If you can get their personal email, that's really awesome. Uh, in fact, most people would probably be fine with giving it to you. But, um, but if not, then uh, at least they know to look for you. They know to look for you. And uh, and again, you got that leg up because you know somebody in person, okay? Now, I said I was gonna take only a little bit of time on these questions, but you guys ask so many good questions. I can't I can't help but but uh, not do that. And and if you can't meet them face to face, then again, you gotta you gotta distance yourself or not distance yourself. You got you gotta bring yourself to light. You gotta put yourself above everybody else by um, having a presence somewhere. You gotta be posting on the forums. You gotta be somebody that they recognize because you would not believe how many times we hired somebody, not by looking at their portfolio, but by seeing something on the forum and be like, oh, hey, I've seen something from this guy before. I've seen something from this artist before. Hey, we should give them a call. We should email them, you know? And that's how most, like 90% of the time, people are getting hired. It's not through the, por it's not through the freaking submission. It's not through the portfolio. Do that too, don't neglect it. But also keep in mind that you are putting, you're stacking the cards against you by just relying on that, okay? So, next up, coming in from Arc Zeros. Arc Zero, great question. And this will be the last one of the day. Uh, he or she is asking about the art on the wall. Specifically, oh, specifically this sexy Princess Leia. This one was done by an artist by the name of Mel Milton. Mel Milton, in fact, let me see if I can find his. Instagram, because this man is amazing and you should all check him out. Melma Dukes, there we go. All right, check this out, guys. This is the artist that did the Princess Leia on the wall. And I absolutely love this guy. I'm actually working on another, pro speaking of work, I'm actually working with this guy on another project. Uh, but that one is still under wraps. So, <laughs> but that's about another teaser for you guys. But yeah, I absolutely Love this guy's style. Absolutely amazing. Go check him out at Melmadukes, Instagram.com. We're done, people. Diva's mostly finished. It'll be uploaded soon. Oh, yeah. And if you would like to get access to today's PSD, as well as all the other PSDs from the past, then just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon, where you can download all of them. And you can go through all the layers for yourself, guys. I really highly encourage you to get on there and take a look at this stuff. Take a look at these over paints. Take a look at actually what I chose, like what colors I chose and like take the move tool and like move it off and see actually what's happening to kind of take our picture from the sketch phase and the color comp phase to the final phase. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end today's show. So thank you guys so much for joining me. <laughs> you guys, uh, oh wait, what was I? It's only totally gonna say something. <laughs> This has been a crazy episode. This has been an absolutely crazy episode. But thank you guys so much for being patient while I got this out. Hope you guys got some good value out of this. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care.